Now, if you've known me for a while, you know how much I love watercolour and intense pencils. So I had a thought, why not use them both together? Now, I don't know about you, but I do find watercolour can be difficult to blend and get the right depth of colour. So I thought I'd add a little va va voom and use my intense pencils to build up the layers and depth that I need, which will definitely help you with layering your colours without that muddy look that you can sometimes get with watercolour that we all fear so much. So let's dive into the world of mixed media and paint this really pretty amaryllis bud together using step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, let's have a quick material run through. I'm using just three Inktense pencils today and just a few watercolours and you can see here that I've got an outline of the amaryllis bud so that you can trace it down yourself and you can see that's exactly what I've done right here. I'm using my own brushes today. These are from my set that I did recently with a collaboration with Craftemo but please use whichever materials you have and everything I'm going to be using today including this cute paper I'm going to be linking in the description box underneath this video so do check out that description. Okay, so watercolour is all about building up colours from light to dark, as you probably already know. And I have here lemon yellow and I've mixed it to a watery consistency with a little bit of sap green. So we've got some variation of colours there. You'll notice that I've got a puddle of water in the middle of my palette. And that's to clean my brush in, as you can see me doing here, pat it dry. And that way I'm not flooding the brush with water. I'm taking this pale lemon colour over some of the tips of the amaryllis bud and also on some of the green areas like this. This will form a really good base layer on which to build our colours later, kind of like an underwash. I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of sap green there. I've also mixed some sap green with that lovely lemon yellow colour. And you can see me there just adding um, a little bit of that, dropping it in. Now, if you want to know how to have access to that outline that I just showed you, there are generally a couple of ways. Um, I'm being honest with you, I made a little bit of a, a mistake. Normally when I do this line drawing, I photograph it and stick the pencil version right at the end of the video. But I was so keen to press on with this tutorial, I actually forgot to photograph it. So I'm going to be really generous this week and give you the digital version right at the end of this video. So all you need to do to get that lovely crisp outline is watch the video right until the end and then you can pause it and screenshot it that way. Or another way you can access that photograph is by joining our Patreon for free, where you can have it directly delivered to your inbox. So there's no scrolling through and looking for it. But I'll tell you a little bit more about Patreon um, a little bit later on in this video. So I'm just using a little bit of that green mix there, that sap green with lemon yellow, and I'm applying it straight onto the watercolour paper using my number eight brush. Notice how I'm cleaning the brush in that little puddle and just blotting it on my kitchen paper and then using that damp brush to just spread that paint really, really easily onto that damp wash. Because the paper is wet, it really means that blending that watercolour paint is relatively easy. But of course, the difficulty sometimes with watercolour is that it can be hard to blend and it does have a tendency to lift off if you're not used to handling the medium. And of course, it can lift off if you're put in too many layers. I've added a tiny bit of uh, olive green tone here, just to the tip of this uh, little bud. And I'm using the tip of my brush to just blend it in like this and dropping it a tiny bit more to the top part. Quinacridone Gold next. You can see the colours that I'm actually using today are from the brand A Gallo, but anything that you've got in your kit will do. In fact, you don't even have to use the same colours as me. Dropping in a little bit of the Quinacridone Gold on the middle of the stem and here and there where I think it needs a little bit of a boost of colour. This is my blender brush, which I'm using damp just to soften the outside edge of this little amaryllis stem. Everything has to be absolutely dry at this point. You cannot add your ink tense pencils to damp paper unless you want a different effect. So here you can see me pointing to this little amaryllis that I've traced down here, which I've just explained to you how to have access to that. So you just need to either go over to Patreon and grab it that way. You can see here I'm using my first color and I've got a nice sharp tip there. This must be dry. If you use your Inktense pencils 
on watercolor paper that stamp you'll have a different effect it comes out really really dark which I'll show you later on but at this point you want your paper to be absolutely dry and I'm using a very very light pressure to apply this color here this is Ionian green I'm using Ionian green violet and deep rose in this instance Ionian green with a light light pressure to any areas that I want to add a darker value Another plus thing about using the ink tense pencils instead of building up with watercolour is that they don't lift off like watercolour will when it's dry. So you can really go to town with these guys and just apply as much of it as you want to to get the darker value that you need. Once you've applied your ink tense pencil, just use a little bit of water to activate that ink and you apply the water in a similar way to the way you would apply watercolour. So I'm just using it to blend it in like this using my number two pointed round brush. You can have a really delicate soft look like this or you can build them up to the strongest intensity that you want. We do have intense playlists and I will put an entire playlist at the end of this video so that you can click through to that in case intense is something that interests you. So I'm just adding a little bit of that Ionian green on the outside edge of the stem here. Again, it's completely dry, straight onto that watercolour paper. And then I'm going to be using my damp brush to, um, this is the, sorry, that was the violet that you saw me using there on the outside edge, just to give it a little bit of variation with colour. Now, if you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to do me a favour and hit that like button below? It's a way of letting YouTube know that you are enjoying my content and it does mean that more people can see it. It would really help to support my channel and help me grow and I'd really appreciate it. As well as maybe hitting that subscribe button. Perhaps you like this kind of video and if you're enjoying it, you may want to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell that you see on the side there. That way you'll be notified when I upload new episodes every week. This is the deep rose colour that you can see and I'm really going to town here. I'm adding a little bit of vibrancy here and there, uh, just using that same motion, a really light touch, and then going in with my watercolour brush to activate that ink. Like I said, once ink tense is dry, it won't lift off in the way that watercolour does, so it does mean that you can apply darker washes where you perhaps struggled with watercolour. You can see me here activating the ink with my brush, just plain water here. Notice how subtle and soft that colour is, but I can build it up a little bit later on. Continuing the process. Now, earlier on, I did mention that we have a Patreon where we upload new content that you simply won't find here on YouTube. All the Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my paying patrons, um, but of course you can join for free if you want to have access to those outlines. And in case this is something that interests you, let's just take a little look when at what you, you get. Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours from vibrant blooms to fine detail and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget and we even have a mentorship and coaching level so if you're serious about developing your skills then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. Notice how I'm blending that paint, just with some water there. When I started this painting, I wasn't quite sure what colours to use. I was just kind of making it up and um, I'm really enjoying experimenting and being as creative as I want to be with this one. Because I'm a botanical artist, sometimes I have to try and go true to the photograph but occasionally we all like to step outside our comfort zone a little bit and just do something really different, which is what I'm doing here. 
just using a little bit of that beautiful deep rose from Inktense and applying this colour here. I did go outside the pencil line a little bit, so this is a great way of sorting out any of those errors. Adding a little bit of the violet colour here and there just to darken up that green tone. I could have used the Aeonian green, but it doesn't matter. As long as you get that dark colour onto your paper, you want that uh, colour to be nice and bright and dark. I'm using a rough surface paper today. Um, it did make the application a little bit easier because it's, it's a little bit more forgiving than a smooth or hot press paper. And I think you can give it, um, it's a bit more robust. Just activating that ink with the outside edge of my paintbrush. You can see I've smudged a little bit of the outside bud of the outside of that bud there, but that's not a problem. We can sort that out later on. Going around with this little brush, just pulling that pigment into the middle of the stem to give it a little bit of dimension. This is a tiny bit of quinacridone gold. I just felt it needed glazing over here and there. And like I said, because we're sort of experimenting in mixed media, the sky's the limit here. I'm not following any pattern. I'm just kind of making up the colors as I go along. Blending it out. This is sap green. I'm even glazing over the other colors with the sap green, as you can see. Just really having fun painting and just being really relaxed about it and not worried about it being the perfect botanical painting. Because I've called this video a mixed media painting, um, we're using two mediums primarily. We are using the ink tents and of course this uh, stunning watercolors that I've got here. I also decided to use a little bit of um, etcher gold paint later on in this uh, painting tutorial. But of course there's nothing stopping you from using felt tip pens or uh, water soluble crayons or anything that you have to make your painting come to life. Just sorting out that error there <laughs> with the outside edge where I went slightly outside the pencil line, but again, it doesn't matter. It's all about enjoying the process. You could even use a gel pen on some of the finer areas if you wanted to. I imagine um, a white gel pen, for example, or even a lovely um, sort of fine liner pen would make it um, spring to life with some of the details. Now, this is where I'm using the ink tents on the damp paper. Notice how it sticks to that paper, but it gives you more of an intense color. By adding ink tents to wet or damp watercolor paper, you get a lot of color payoff, but it does make it difficult to blend and it does stick. So if you want something that's permanent and you want something to give you your colors, a real sort of strength, a pack a punch, you put your ink tents pencils onto your damp watercolor paper and blend it out. It will move a little bit, but um, once it's dry, it's dry and it's not going anywhere. So you can see I'm just using my blender brush here just to lift out a little bit of that smudging. And just go in again with some more of the Inktense pencil here. This is Deep Rose. Really pressing down with that pigment. You can see how strong that color is. And you can still blend it out with uh, some uh, really light touch there using some plain water with my watercolor brush. I am using just plain watercolor brushes for this. It doesn't matter, it's perfectly fine to use. These are my good brushes, so it's absolutely fine to use those with ink tents, as long as you rinse them out with water afterwards. Just adding a bit of detail here. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to give you the um, digital version of the outline of this amaryllis so that you can trace it down if you want to. Of course, there's nothing to stop you from drawing it freehand, but um, I know a lot of my viewers like to trace things down, as do I, because I simply don't have the time to draw things freehand. I know that some people don't like that, so if you want to draw it freehand, then please go right ahead. But in case you're interested, I will leave it, as I said, right at the end of this video so that you can pause it and screenshot it that way. I'm now using my watercolor glaze. I love doing this at this point of my paintings, just using plain water and taking it over the entire thing. What's happening now is that the colors are merging together slightly. It does mean that I lose some of the value that I put in, but it means I can go over it later on when it's dry. 
Here are my Etcher paints. I love these. I bought them some time ago and I use them from time to time just to add a bit of, um, a bit of uh, de gold detail where needed. So I've mixed up the, the gold colour here. This one is called Deep Gold. You need to mix these colours up with very little water because you want them to have a really strong pigment. So it's quite a thick consistency paint and I'm just applying this where I feel it is needed. It's down the, bend, down the middle of the stem for example and I'm adding a tiny bit more to the outside areas of the amaryllis bud. I felt it needed a little bit of something special here so I love this because it gives it that really kind of sparkly look. I'm taking this colour around the outside of some of the petals just to define them where I've lost that definition where I did the water glaze earlier on and I'm using this opportunity to add a bit of detail in some of these I don't know what you call them. Let's call them wiggly bits. If you know what they're called, let me know. It's kind of these little um, squiggles on the plant there. Let me know what they're called, will you, if you know? Um, and just carry on the process like this. I'm even glazing over some of that pink tone with this gold just to give it a bit of sparkle and just carrying on the process. I also decided to add steel grey. I love this colour in this set. It's a really beautiful dark glimmery goldy steel colour. It's beautiful and I hope this um, does it justice here on the camera because it really is a beautiful colour. I'm just adding this right until the end, just adding a bit more detail. I'm making a few final tweaks, just adding a little bit of detail where I need to and I like to outline some of my petals just to give them that little bit more definition. I'm just going to repeat this process until the painting is complete. So I'll stop talking now and let you watch the rest of this in peace, listening to some music. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and um, don't forget to subscribe. If this kind of content interests you, do consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.